And welcome back to Red Card. I'm your host, Anthony Toter. And right now we go live to Houston, Texas to talk with Houston Dynamo defender Warren Craval. Warren, welcome to Red Card, my friend. I appreciate it. Happy to be here. Pleasure to have you on, Warren. Let's talk about a 2014 season underway preseason camp. Obviously, you want to put 2013 behind you and try to get back to the final and break down that door and win it all. What have you, your teammates, and the coaching staff talked about early on that you guys need to work on so you can get back to the final and win it all this season? Um, obviously, right now it's, uh, it's uh, early on in the season. You know, we're just still putting together the pieces of our team. We still have prowess, but everybody knows the attitude here. It's, uh, you know, winning a championship is our ultimate goal. Everybody has that mindset, and uh, that's uh, what we're working to, to get right now. You know, Warren, your squad is, is a mix of youngsters and veterans, and it's got to be really, really uh, comforting knowing behind you is Tally Hall. Uh, next year is Corey Ash, and I could go on and on. You've got national team players on your roster. You've got a team that understands it doesn't really need to be uh, pumped up for each and every game. They know what's at stake. How great is that? That's a great feeling. I mean, knowing that everybody can bring that consistency each and every game. I mean, like you said, we have uh, a lot of players with experience, and then we have a good mix of youth uh, and sparking energy. So it's a uh, it's a uh, real comforting, I would say. Is it safe to say, Warren, that Coach Dominic Kinnear, one of the best in the world, I would say, not just in MLS, is is a guy that really is a player's coach? We hear that expression quite a bit, but I think he really is a player's coach with you guys. He leaves you guys alone. You don't see him shouting and yelling on the sidelines throughout the game. He's relaxed and calm because he's done, I believe, his teaching and instructing and training. Right. I mean, you know, Dom... He was a player himself, um, played at some of the highest levels with, uh, within the United States. So, I mean, he's been there before and he knows how he will want to coach, and I think that reflects in his coaching. Warren, I've watched you play since you've entered the league. You're a physical player. You've got a, a ton of speed, and, and you play the game full out for the full 90 minutes. That's the type of player that I believe the Houston Dynamo have had on their roster since the day they've come into the league. Is that important for the youngsters today coming on to your squad, that they understand the work uh, mentality of the Houston Dynamo? It's start to finish. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh Work ethic is a big thing that's emphasized here in Houston, and uh, it should, coming on the squad should be a big part of your game. Um, and don't get me wrong, we do have very uh, tactical, uh, technical players on our team, very skilled players, but um, each player brings that work ethic along with that. So. It is a very important aspect on our team, absolutely. Warren, you come out of the University of Central Florida. What can you take away from that experience that is so vital and so important to you today uh, playing for the Houston Dynamo? I've had so many guys that have gone on to success in MLS like Graham Zussi, Matt Beasler, and I could go on and on, guys from your club as well, that accredited playing in the NCAA to a huge part of their development and where they're at today. How important was Central Florida to you? Um, it was it was great. I mean, it's uh, it a great sense. It, it was very it was it was competitive. You know, you were always playing games, got a lot of playing time, and uh, you know, just developing that physical aspect. That's that's a big jump from uh, high school to college. Um, developing that physical aspect of your game, while wow, you can uh, really develop the skill along with it. So, I think it was a big help for me. Personally, uh, there are some players that are able to make that jump, but college has been very instrumental in my development. How important of a year is this going to be for yourself, Warren, personally, but also for your squad to start out uh, strong? You see how your conference has changed dramatically and how many teams have changed the look of their squad, whether it was a coaching change or you, you see players coming here to TFC with Jermaine Defoe and Bradley. You see uh, Mike McGee now, a full season with Chicago. How, how important is it that you guys start out quick at the beginning? Um, I mean, we, we, we want to take every single game, one game at a time. Uh, but, yeah, we do want to start off on the right foot. Uh, you know, like you said, the Eastern Conference has changed a lot, and uh, every team is getting better every year. So you really got to come out of the cage uh, in the right direction. 
and really set the tone for the rest of the season. I mean, it's got to be great, Warren, now to travel to Philadelphia and see Marisa Du back home, uh, the proud American playing for Philly. We talked about TFC with Bradley. We talked about McGee in Chicago. I mean, it's got to be great now to have a league like MLS bringing back their players from overseas to play here. And also, you see world-class players like Marco DeVille with Montreal, and you see others with other teams. The league is going in leaps and bounds. You're right, absolutely. I mean, it's it's evident that the league is growing, and uh, you know, players want to play in the league now. You know, it's it's a very desirable league around the world. I would say now, um, there's still obviously some room for growth, but uh, it's headed in a very good direction. I would say, and it's uh, it's going to be exciting to see the league grow in these next few years. You know, I had an opportunity when L.A. came to town to play TFC, Warren. I spoke to Keen, and I asked him the question about the perception overseas, still about some of his former teammates and others, about them thinking about this being a vacation league. Well, i got to tell you something. I've spoken to a lot of players in Italy, and they have told me that they believe it's no longer a vacation league. It's a league that you've got to be ready for. How important is that respect now for yourself, but also for the league? Um, I think it's huge. I mean, like you said, it was looked at that. It was perceived as that before, and uh, and uh, I don't I don't believe that at all. I mean, you look at our league; it's, it's competitive week in and week out. Um, the table is always tight, and every game counts. So I mean, and uh, the level is always going up year year after year. So it's uh, like I said, it's going to be exciting to keep seeing that development and seeing more and more players choose to come to the United States to play there, to play in the league. So um, I'm, I'm just uh, trying to develop along with it and keep pushing. You know, Warren, your city and the Houston Dynamo have been a success from day one. Uh, they attract a number of fans. They do a fantastic job of post and pregame. Uh, this is a, a model franchise. But let's be honest, Warren. When you go to that Pacific Northwest now as a player, uh, you think of Portland, Seattle, and Vancouver. It is, by all accounts, by so many players and clubs, a European atmosphere. How great is that? Uh, to get jacked up and ready to play a Seattle in a packed house or a Portland or a Vancouver? Um, I mean, what, what they're doing with soccer up there is, is pretty special, I would say. I mean, the atmosphere that they've created is, uh, is second to none. Um, I, I mean, I think I went to Portland for the first time this past year, and uh, the atmosphere was great. Um, and that's what you want to see around the league. I mean... Our fans here in Houston have done a fantastic job and created a great atmosphere here in the South as well, and we just want to keep spreading that across the league. Let me ask your thoughts on this, Warren. Obviously, the league is expanding. Orlando will be coming in soon. The rumors are hot and heavy of Miami. I personally think two other cities should come in, and I believe that the soccer in their communities are huge. One would be Atlanta, I believe, should come into the league sooner than later. And another one, I would go back to Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, where they were way back in the North American Soccer League. Give me your thoughts on those two cities. Um, well... Uh, I grew up playing soccer in Atlanta, and soccer, youth soccer is very big there. And uh, I do believe that the city could support a soccer team. Uh, the demographic, I think, is there, and support, I think, would be there. Tulsa, on the other hand, I, I honestly don't know too much about the city. I haven't spent too much time. I've been playing college soccer games, but uh, the, the college program is always big. I mean, if that's any indication, they, they're... Uh, they're always well supported within their community. That's any indication, but I can't speak too much on Tulsa because I'm ignorant to that city. But Atlanta, I do believe, um, should be able to get a team in these next few years. Warren, for you to get to this level playing professional MLS today, it came by hard work. But it also must have came by some people that believed in you, that stuck by you. Was there a youth coach? Was there a parent? Was there someone that really believed in you? Maybe when you weren't playing your best. Or maybe when there was a youth coach that said, Warren, you're not a starter today. You're going to be on the bench. Who, who has been so instrumental in your life to help get where you're at today? Picking up a paycheck, playing the game you love. Um, there were, I, I've had a handful of great coaches along my youth career um, growing up in Atlanta. Um, from my club coach, Todd Gispert, um, I had him for most of my youth career and uh, our club director, uh, 
Ray Tomlin, and uh, actually uh, my ODP coach as well had me on the B team when I first went to region camp with them uh, for the state team. So uh, that, that was a big motivation for me there. Uh, Karim Dasser had me on the B team and uh, had to kind of find my way up to, to the first team and keep going from there. And uh, that next year I was there and just kept growing from there. How great is it to see Team USA getting ready to go to Brazil, how far they have developed as a nation, Warren. I've said this and I'll say it again and again, Warren. I truly believe under your Klinsman that I believe within the next two World Cups, whether it's Russia or Qatar, that the USA could be knocking on the door of a Final Four. Maybe not win it all, but I believe that they're that good, that the game has changed so much at the grassroots level. What we saw years ago, the USA would play that physical kick and run and, you know, physical brand of game. Now, you've got guys that can spray the ball around, intelligent, and understand the game. How great is that for the youngsters growing up? Uh, that's definitely great to see. Um, just to know that it's a possibility for the young kids, just to know that, you know, one day you can be there, you can, you know, do you know, keep keep pressing on to maybe what, you know, the people, the team you're watching on TV wasn't able to do, you know, to keep that development going within the country. So, I mean, for the youth to see, I think it's amazing. Juan, what's a player that you want to tailor yourself after still today in your young, tender age playing in MLS? Is there someone in MLS or overseas that you really enjoy their style that you try to emulate? A specific player? Yeah, a specific player or two. Um, I don't know if there's a specific player. I, I do just try to pick up uh, different pieces of different players' games that I like. There, there's not a single player that I want to become a carbon copy of at all. I, want, I would like to be my own individual player, and that's always my goal just to, to be me and Warren Cavall. And that's awesome. That's awesome to hear, Warren. Who, who's one of the toughest competitors you faced like? season or in the past couple of years in MLS coming down you that you've got to make sure you don't let that uh, guy out of your sight um just in this past year I mean uh falling to Kansas City I would say uh I want to give uh you know I'll give Grant Zussi his props uh you know he's really sparked that team in my opinion to their uh recent championship run um he's been a good competitor I mean there's a lot of great competitors in the league but I mean after watching them win the MLS Cup, I'm I giving his props on that. Let me give you a, a quick uh, analysis on what's going up here in Canada. There's a huge debate going on uh, with the Women's World Cup coming here soon about AstroTurf and grass. As a player, you've played in both. And I know as a parent myself of two boys, Warren, I really don't like when my boys play on that artificial turf because it takes a wear and tear on the knees and on the body and on the joints. Where do you feel? Uh, as a player, that you're more comfortable. Is it all grass or is it artificial? Maybe. Oh, that's definitely grass. Um, artificial. I mean, it, it has come a long way from the original Astro Turf, I'm sure, but it's always uh, grass is always the preferred uh, field option for me and most players. I would say. As we close it out, Warren, what advice could you give the young coaches out there that could help them when they're coaching the youngsters out there? That would be one. And what would you like to say to the young kids out there that would want to be Warren Carval one day and be where you're at, playing professional soccer? Um, to, the, to the younger players, I mean, I would say just keep tracing his dreams. I mean, I know it sounds a bit cliche, but just keep persevering. Uh, just be very coachable and uh, be true to yourself and uh, just keep on going. If you, if you really want it, you'll get there one day. What about the young coaches? What would you like to say to the young coaches? Maybe sometimes they get over-exuberant on the sidelines and really get into uh, the faces of some of the players. What would you like to say to them? Um, I mean, with, with those coaches, I mean, a lot of the time, you know, they have good intentions, but uh, also just remember that positive reinforcement. And uh, not every player is the same and really can't be treated the same. Uh, just managing players, you know, I mean, some players react well to, to that in-your-face attitude. Some players, you know, they, they go on the show, you know. 
so not every play is the same, I would say. Warren, it's been outstanding having you on. Listen, we can't wish you nothing but success in 2014. Good luck to you and the Houston Dynamo. I'm pretty sure we'll see you back in the final this year and maybe a winning it all. You're a class act. Keep smiling, and I'm pretty sure we'll see you on the score sheet once again this year. Warren Carval, thanks so much for joining us on Red Card.